Hi everyone. Um, welcome to part two of how to model a Sphericon pendant in uh, Blender 2.76. Um, if you're joining for the first time, I'm calling this part two because uh, uh, in a previous video we modeled this object that you see here and the video cut out at me at the very end. Um, there was just one more step to go and something something happened and the video got cut short there. Um, the model is is pretty much done um, so if you're joining us for the first time you might want to uh, go ahead to my playlist or back into my videos and look at look for the previous video um, on how to model this object and I'll link it in the description and possibly in the inside the video here too so um, you can look at that one first uh, so you're not confused as to how this uh, shape came to be uh, for everyone else who followed that previous video and was wondering how we would get the uh, the hole that uh, you need for a necklace um, to go through it um, this is this is that part and um, this is what I'm talking about here uh, this is what we were going to work on in the last video is to put this hole through there um, and uh, it's very simple to do I'm going to go down into edit mode here and uh, as I was talking about in the previous video if we go to wireframe mode you can see that there is some internal geometry in there that we need to be careful of um, we don't want to create the hole and then uh, intersect that internal geometry because it would cause all sorts of topological problems as you can imagine um, especially if we're 3d printing so basically we want to avoid uh, coming in contact with that internal geometry and um, the best way to do that is to notice that there's an, an edge loop going around the object here and uh, if you notice that the uh, the internal geometry is below this edge loop so we can use this as a guide to uh, for creating our hole so that we know not to uh, come down below this edge loop um, and we're safe anywhere above that all right so now the first step in creating a nice round hole here is to find uh, at least two polygons that are of similar uh, surface area okay so now you can just notice by seeing here that these two polygons next to each other and this is where we want our hole um, are very different in surface area and um, we, it wouldn't allow us to put a hole right here which is where we'd want it to, to balance if uh, we were putting a necklace through um, it, it wouldn't allow that here so um, what we want to do is just create a, a little bit of extra resolution and we could uh, adjust that to come up with two uh, uh, polygons of, of very similar surface area all right so I'm going to hold down control and tap R uh, to bring up my loop cut and slide tool and I'm just going to insert an edge loop right right in, uh, you know intersecting this uh, polygon right here and I'm just going to slide it until it kind of matches up visually with the polygon next to it here on the right hand side so to my eye this looks very similar uh, in surface area okay and, and even if it's not exact which it isn't um, it's good enough to make the the hole that we want right here so all right so now we have two polygons if we go to face mode and select this one and this one two polygons of very similar uh, size um, one thing I you know if if, if yours isn't uh, like this you you can just select some of these uh, vertices up at the top like if, if your edge is, is slanted just select the group of vertices up here um, in, in with uh, box select and, and just kind of move them over until you have uh, a topology similar to this one okay all right that's all it's just these uh, these vertices and edges up here might be facing this way uh, when I left it, when we uh, ended the session last all right but it's very simple just to select them and move them all right now over on the other side we're going to hold down shift and, and select these these two polygons all right so oops what happened there i guess i didn't hold shift all right um so now we have these four faces selected directly across from each other on the object 
and yes you can cut the object in half if you wanted to and model in symmetry uh, and just work on one side but um, this is such a simple procedure that that that's almost a waste of time in this case all right so we'll just select these four and uh, tap the I key to bring up our inset tool and just inset it a little bit here um, uh, over here on the left hand side the thickness would be I'm gonna put in a type in a thickness of 0.03 alright so that's the uh, thickness of the inset that I've used here alright and uh, if you were following along in the last tutorial you might well have the individual uh, face inset option selected still uh, from when we were modeling these uh, hexagonal shapes down here in the middle of the object if you notice that when you did your inset that you have two polygons instead of uh, one polygon or in this case actually two large polygons um, then that's the problem over here on the left hand side you just need to deselect that individual uh, inset option so it may have been selected from our previous operation still all right so here we have uh, our inset completed okay and um, we're going to circularize our uh, our faces and to do that over here on the left hand side under loop tools uh, make sure your loop tools add-on is enabled by the way um, there's an option called circle and with those faces selected we're just going to go ahead and click circle and you'll see it turned those to uh, a circular shape however uh, it's a little large here so um, what we're going to do is just make sure you're uh, down here in your pivot point settings make sure individual origins is selected and go ahead and tap S for the scale tool and just slightly scale that uh, the, those polygons down a little bit so that you have some room uh, between this bottom vert and the uh, the edge below it all right same thing on the other side all right and so as long as you selected individual origins it should have uh, been able to scale them appropriately all right so now we're left with this all right and um, the next step is to uh, enable our bridge tool all right just click on bridge and that should have uh, done this which is bridge those two uh, uh, parallel selections together okay now if you notice uh, if you end up with a bridge that looks like this then over here in your bridge loft uh, uh, tool panel uh, there is a twist option Okay, so if your bridge looks like this, or, or maybe it's twisted even worse than that, um, just go over here to uh, the bridge loft options and uh, start clicking on the twist uh, option. Okay, and um, until you can either go forward or, or, or backwards until you get the uh, nice, clean, straight uh, bridge. Okay, uh, it should have bridged perfectly, but if it didn't, then that could be the reason all right so there's our bridge and now the next step is um, we're going to bevel these edges here so we'll go to edge mode and just hold down shift and alt while you select one of these edges all right and the same on the other side all right and then uh, go ahead and hold down control and tap b and just pull out a very slight bevel all right mine is actually the amount I have here is 0 0.009 all right so just a very slight bevel um, I'm using the offset um, a type which is uh, which is fine in this case all right but you want to maintain some space here um, between this bottom vert and the line uh, below it all right and um, all right and then we could uh, go ahead and tab out to our object mode and, and apply our subdivision surface modifier and there's our hole okay and that's a fairly large hole so you, you know when we if you went to 3d print this uh, uh, I think you know you'd want to you'd want to make sure that that hole was large enough to uh, depending on the scale that you're modeling at to fit uh, some kind of uh, necklace through it or whatever all right so that's how you achieve the hole nice and cleanly I'll go to uh, shut off my wires and draw all edges and uh, you can see how that hole turned out 
Okay, so if you're going to export this as an STL, I wouldn't go any lower than three subdivisions. Four would give you a very nice smooth result. All right, so um, this is four subdivisions, which is what I'd export it as if I was going to uh, go with an STL export. But if you're just using it in render or in a scene, um, you can go as low as two uh, iterations there and just apply the uh, uh, the smooth shading option. All right, and we could even uh, bring up our properties tab and apply a mac cap just like that to see how it would look uh, with some kind of material on it. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. I hope you found this uh, this video informative. Um, again, there there's a part one to show you how to achieve this shape here. Um, so uh, if you haven't seen that yet, uh, check out the link in the description or in video. All right, and uh, to everyone else, I, I thank you so much for your support and. Um, Stay tuned for more videos like this. Please subscribe to the channel and like the video if you found it useful. And uh, I'll see you again very soon.